in this video I'm going to show you how to create this ink portrait using Photoshop. So let's get started. Hey what's up guys Drill here and as you can see this is the final output. Now as you can see there are a few layers that we will be working on but it's not that complicated. So first of all I tried this but it sucked. Then I tried this one. It also sucked. So I tried uh, this really nice close-up photograph and it actually worked. So let's see how we can do it. Uh, first of all go to file, open, uh, then open the photo that you want to turn into a portrait. So uh, I'm going to crop it first. I think this looks good and also make sure that your delete crop pixel is off so you don't end up deleting the rest of the photo. So confirm it. Uh, looks good. Now before we create the effect we need to create the background and for that go to file uh, and then select place embedded and here go and select this book paper texture and place it and then go and put it in a corner like this now obviously it's a little too small so hold your shift key and drag it from a corner and make it big just make sure that you can fit in four of this uh, they don't have to fit in entirely just make sure that uh, they kind of fit okay uh, so confirm it now we need to make a copy of this so for that go and press ctrl j select your move tool and move it around now if you can use as many different textures uh, like as many different papers as possible uh, but in case you don't have access to many resources uh, i'm gonna show you a work way around it so uh, i'm gonna press ctrl t right click and flip it vertical so we can have a little bit of variety i mean it's still gonna look a bit obvious but it's better than doing nothing so now again I'm gonna make a copy, Control J, uh, put it a little bit here, then press Control T, right click. And this time I'm gonna flip it horizontal, right click and flip vertical as well. So it looks a bit different I guess. Uh, and then again press Control J and then I'm gonna go and move it around like this. Now actually we need 16 copies of it and that's just too many layers. So before we do anything I'm gonna group it. So select this layer 1, hold your shift key, click on the top one, then press ctrl G and it will turn it into a group. Uh, you can access it like this. So it makes it easy to access everything. Now I'm gonna make copy of my group. So press ctrl J, so you have a copy, then move it down like this. Now I know it still looks like that we copied the same page but now it has some variety to it compared to nothing. So this is done. Now here comes a little bit important part uh, and it depends on power of your computer. If you think your PC can handle it, leave the groups just like this. Uh, not a problem. But if your computer is a little bit weak or old, I recommend that you flat your groups. So you right click here and then you select merge group. So it will basically turn your entire group into a single layer. Now of course that this will take away your freedom of moving single page around but on the other hand it will put a lot less stress on your system. So it's your choice whatever you want to do. So I'm going to keep the groups and actually you know what I'm going to group this groups. I know groups option. So select this one hold your shift key and click on this one and then press ctrl G. So everything is in a single group. You can also right click here and select merge group and you have just one single JPEG. So that's also really easy on your system. So the most tedious process is done. Now let's work on the uh, actual effect. So select your layer zero and put it on top of your group. Shit, not in the group, on top of it. Actually take the group and put it under layer zero. Much more convenient. So select this one. We need three more copies of this one. So press Ctrl J, Ctrl J, Ctrl J, and we have four copies. Now uh, let's rename them before we get lost. So layer zero, double click on it and rename it photocopy one. Now select second one, rename it photocopy two. Now select third one and rename it to threshold and sumi e. So I'm just basically gonna name it T and E. Now select final one and rename it to multiply. And this actually kind of explains the entire tutorial. So first of all hide all these three layers we don't need them. Just select the photocopy one. 
Now we will start applying filters on the layers but before you apply them two things to keep in mind. One, turn your layers into smart objects. So right click here and then select convert to smart object and another thing is make sure your colors here they are black and white. Black in front, white in back. Make sure they are exactly like this. After that go to your filter then select filter gallery and in the filter gallery let me zoom out so we can see what the hell is going on. Okay so here go and select photocopy just like we named the layer uh, and your target is to make sure you have really nice thick uh, black borders uh, doesn't matter how you get it what numbers you put in i don't care just get really nice thick borders uh, so for me uh, i think somewhere around 5 in detail and 34 in darkness works pretty good and in case you screw up something you can always change it so don't worry too much i'm gonna hit ok looks uh, let's go to blending options and turn it to multiply so basically when we put it on multiply it will get rid of all the white color in the photo so we have this really nice black borders and i think we need to make them a little bit thicker so double click on this filter gallery here and it will open it up uh, let's zoom out now i'm gonna go and increase the darkness a bit and also a little bit more detail that looks good hit ok Perfect. Now let's go and work on the photocopy too. So activate it, turn it on, right click, convert to smart object, then go to your filter, filter gallery. This time we will be doing complete opposite. So I don't care about the darkness, uh, let it be really dull. Uh, on the flip side, increase your detail. So we have a good amount of mid tones. As you can see, uh, it gives a little bit more depth to your image instead of looking like, you know, straight cut out. So I think this looks good, then go and hit OK. Uh, and just like the last time, go to your blend options and turn it to multiply. So now if I turn it on and off, as you can see, it gives decent amount of depth to your photo, a bit more dimension. Then let's go and apply a threshold. And this will, this is the layer that will change everything. So, uh, turn it on, right click and convert to smart object. After that, go to your image, uh, adjustments here and then select threshold. In the threshold, uh, for this photo, somewhere around 100 is enough. It also depends on like what kind of look you want. Uh, so I'm gonna keep it like 101, then go and hit OK. After that, go to your blending options and multiply. So as you can see, this kind of gives actual look to your effect. But problem is that you can see it's really grainy and like it doesn't look that good. So to fix that, I'm going to apply a filter. So for that, go to your filter, filter gallery. And in the options here, go and select Sumi E. So I'm going to go and zoom out so you guys can see what is going on. So. Uh, because of Sumi E, instead of those really grainy dots, we have this kind of, uh, you know, charcoal strokes, uh, which give really nice look. So stroke width is 7, 6, 5, it's up to you, man. And then stroke pressure is 0 and contrast is also 0. Feel free to experiment. Looks good, then go and hit OK. Before, after, before, after. Makes a lot of difference. Now we have some problems. Uh, as you can see this black bar we need to remove that and also th there is little too much grain because of this two photocopy which i also need to remove and for that we will be using layer mask it's super easy to use i'm going to show you how first of all let's start with this one tne so go and click on your layer mask after that select your brush tool in the brush since we want since we want to remove it i'm going to go and change it to black and instead of this really cool brushes, go and select this nice round brush. And then the hardness, keep it somewhere around like 70-80%. Then just simply go and erase it like this. Uh, you can use your bracket keys to make it smaller. Then go and erase it. So that's gone. And I'm going to do the same thing with both of this. So all the cleanup work is done and now we can do the finishing touches. First of all, let's fix the background. I think it's a little too yellow. So select your group tool, then create new adjustment layer and select curves and only just make it bright a little bit from the middle. 
and it will help the model stand out a bit more. Then go and close it and I still need to remove a little bit of yellow color. So for that create new adjustment layer and make it black and white. Now it's completely gone and it also looks terrible. I'm gonna go and reduce the opacity to like 20-30% so yellow color is just a little bit dim. Looks good and after that uh, turn this layer on. Now you must be thinking we named it multiply and white spec to layer 0 copy 3. That's because I messed up in editing. <laughs> Actually I did a mistake I pressed ctrl z and I also ended up removing the name multiply. So I'm gonna rename it back to multiply. And just like the name go to your options and turn it to multiply. Now of course it looks terrible and we don't need the entire photo. So I'm gonna apply layer mask. Apply a mask but when you do it hold your alt key and option if you're using apple. So hold the alt key and then apply it. And boom everything is hidden. After that go and get your brush tool and make sure color here is white. Then just simply paint on the lips like this. Right click make sure hardness is like 70-80% so it doesn't go outside too much. Okay now I need them to look more colorful and for that go to your adjustment and select vibrance. Turn this thing on clipping mask so whatever changes you do will only stay on the layer below. So I'm gonna keep it somewhere on like 80%. Close it. And now the final thing and those are paint brushes. So create new blank layer and rename it to paint. Now go to your brush option and select paint brushes. Now if you want to use this the download link is in description with the image link. So use it. So I'm gonna select this one uh, like you can use any one they all look good in this photo. And I'm also gonna make it smaller using my bracket key. Uh, so make sure you select black color, hold your alt key and select black color from here and then just do a click and boom there you have it. Now I'm going to do the same thing here but here I'm going to use different brush which is like a bit thinner. So I'm going to select this one. So this looks good. Also I'm going to make it smaller and then do a click. Now of course to blend it properly select your eraser tool. And then erase it from the nose. So it kind of looks like it's behind it on the other eye. And also I'm going to erase it from the eye. And just like that you can have paint dripping from it. I tried the same thing with the lips but it kind of didn't work out. So I just kept it to the eyes. You can apply it on different portions of image if you want. So that's it and this is the final output. I really hope that you guys learned something from this video and if you did hit that like button and if you have any kind of questions or suggestions feel free to ask me in comment section below. Till then goodbye take care and have some fun with photoshop.